This is going to be an email marketing behind the scenes video showing you everything that we are implementing for our clients to make their email and SMS marketing successful. So you'll find out what automations we're using, how are we structuring campaign calendars or campaigns in general, and what else can you do to even go a step further and generate 40, 50, maybe 60% off your sales from your list. Now, mind you that from your list doesn't that automatically mean that these are your customers. You have traffic coming to your store, you have visitors, some of these visitors are first time buyers or not potential customers who have not placed an order yet and they give you their email address or even maybe their phone number that doesn't turn them into customers yet you still have to send them an email maybe a follow-up you still have to send them a text to turn them into a customer so email and sms plays a crucial role in turning as much of your traffic into customers because not everyone will buy right away so let's dive right in without any further ado. We have here, we're looking at uh, when, when we're going to go over the metrics, it's usually the last 30 days. So this brand, it's a beauty brand, generated over 130,000 dollars in sales, 47%, close to 47% came from email. We have SMS tool that we use in addition to that. So it's not on, the, not on Clade, it's on a different platform. We have following automations, welcome flows, abandoned cart, added to cart, browse abandonment, replenishment reminder, site abandonment, and transactional emails that also generate sales. So the biggest difference between probably are going to ask yourself immediately, abandoned cart and added to cart. So as you can see here, we have different filters. So first uh, triggers, sorry, not filters, we have different triggers. This trigger, this is true, this automations is triggered when someone started the checkout and has not placed an order versus this automation starts or is triggered when someone adds to cart without starting a checkout or without placing an order and these two generate significant amount of sales that contributed to pretty uh, much 23,000 something dollars in sales in the last 30 days alone. So it makes sense. The difference, the biggest difference is that added to cart flow will show the first item you added to cart or your customer added to cart versus a ban on checkout. We usually call it a ban on cart as well, but the checkout started triggered email automations is showing all the products in cart that your customers left behind and we're trying to get them back. Of course, if you want to take it a step further, you can create custom automations for each particular product, maybe each particular category. It makes sense in most cases, or in some cases, I should say, not in main, most cases. In most cases, a generic automation email will work simply because you are showing them the products that they have. But if you have maybe, maybe one product store, maybe two products that are really standing out or you just have these two products, it may be making more sense to go more in depth about this for each particular product. So in this case, you would have two abandoned cart or two abandoned checkout flows. I hope it makes sense. When it comes to welcome series, it's crucial to have at least four or five emails there and test at least two offers. I recommend testing at least two offers. The first offer in the first email will be your sign up form. It might be 10% off, 15% off, maybe cash back. In the United States, cash books are working really well. That means that people are buying full price and they are they have 30 days to claim their cash back and they can use the cash back for whatever purchases they want they don't even have to technically spend that money on your store they can but they can go anywhere else and buy products online with the money that they got from you and turns out that only third one third of people that buy that way claim that cash back but still most of them continue to come and come back and, and buy products from you so Definitely, it's a valid channel and cashback sounds really nice as a sign up offer and people are signing up. So your sign up rate might go up and at the same time, your profitability might go up. So you might consider that as your sign up offer. That's when it comes to automations in terms of campaigns would that drive obviously even more sales. As far as campaigns, we are sending three to four emails every single week and you can stick to that schedule if you have the capacity or bandwidth to do so if you can send only one email per week consistently then do it if you can send two do it with three to four emails you can start looking with one or two campaigns into being more specific with it meaning you're not sending to people that are engaged 
they are opening your emails or clicking your emails, but maybe you're sending this particular campaigns to people that have looked at certain products multiple times. Maybe they have been active on site multiple times during the last week, maybe last month. So you can be a lot more specific, maybe a little bit more aggressive with the offer or how you would speak to these group of people. Again, that depends on the industry. For this particular brand, it's a beauty brand. So we talk a lot about ingredients, the quality of the ingredients, founder's story from him, all, all that he is learning and implementing into his products formulas. We shared it with the audience, making them more aware of what's out there on the market, how they can improve their results with particular ingredients or products that, or maybe bundling certain products together to create even better experience for them or better results for them. This brand number two is selling socks, mostly winter socks. And as you can see here, they generated 18,000 out of 50,000 in sales from email and a little bit from SMS as well. What we have here is welcome flow added to cart event on checkout. So again, these flows are performing still pretty well. Browse abandonment, win back and upsells. Well, win back is, is a very interesting flow as well. <clears throat> and the goal with the win back flow is trying to get people that bought once, but not in the last 90 days or 120 days. You try to get these people back. And what we've seen even greater success than just an email and SMS is direct mail campaign send them a postcard, maybe a cardalog. A cardalog is a trifold. It's a great way to display your best-selling products. You have a lot of real estate, a lot of space on these trifolds, and they are so nice that they might be laying around someone's shelves for weeks before they place an order. That's what we've seen. So we sent a campaign, direct mail campaign. It took this group of people two, three weeks to start placing orders. When they start placing orders, the orders start to pour in. Trust me, it outperformed any email or SMS campaign that we had for Winback flows for our Winback people, so people that want to come back on board, and it just worked. So try it, consider it. As far as campaigns, in this case, obviously there's it's a seasonal product. Majority of the sales come during the winter times here in the United States and Canada. So campaigns are around the quality of the products. That's super important, especially with a product like socks. You have to make sure that there is some something that motivates people to buy from you versus any brand on Amazon. We structure a campaign calendar to talk about the quality of the products. Uh, we test various offers. Obviously, you don't want to sell one pair of socks. You want to sell multiple socks or bundles or even greater bundles with all the products that you have or all different types of socks that you have. So try to be as creative as possible, but still staying top of mind. It's also a cool product as a gift if you position it correctly. So uh, why not? I definitely would love to receive some fresh socks as soon as my wife sees me, my, my holes in my socks and uh, I don't pay attention to them. So that would be also a great gift. And uh, to be honest, I've been using his uh, this particular brand socks for a long time, multiple seasons, and they still look pretty good. They don't lose any elasticity or whatsoever. And that's the, those are the main points we cover in the emails as well as customers. This, this is another example of a seasonal brand. Now, the results aren't as good as in previous brands. However, SMS is playing a major role and we don't use this, um, we don't use Clavy for SMS. But I really wanted to show you the power of, of the welcome flow. Let me move camera here up there. If, if your welcome flow is structured correctly, you can make a killing just with that particular flow. And that just email. We do a lot more on SMS side. So $27,000 came from new subscribers. That is telling me that people love joining newsletters. They love to get the offer. And the best thing about it is once you have them, once they click the email, once they open the email, once they are on your list, you will be able to track their activities on your, on your store and be more specific. So the order flows will start performing much, much better. So when the welcome flow is working well, trust me, for the next 90 days, your the rest of the flows, especially the abandoned cart, checkout, browse abandonment flows, site abandonment flows, these flows will start performing. And it's also a fresh account. It was a bit uh, challenging for us to bring, um, to get it started and bring the, e switch the email service provider 
towards the end of last year. So uh, it was was a bit of a challenge with deliverability and, and things like of that nature, but we've, we're on the right track to definitely boost sales for that particular store um, over the next 30 or 60 days. Lastly, we have a wellness brand that is generating also anywhere between 30 and 50% of sales from their list, 36 from email, and we have another tool for SMS. And uh, on, SM, on the SMS side, we pretty much have similar flows. It's just not email, it's just SMS, much shorter. We have maybe one email SMS per flow, but it's still the same, same principles apply. We wanna have a welcome flow, abandoned cart, abandoned checkout, Thank you flow in this case is performing still really well, even better than browse abandonment and site abandonment. So let's talk about the thank you flow in this particular example. So a thank you flow, the way I like to structure the thank you flow is two ways. The first way would be the, the, the classical way is, hey, someone bought from you for the first time, give them a discount for the next order, maybe plug in a ref even better, a referral link, something that is super simple, copy and paste so they can get 15% off the next order and gift someone else 10 or 15%. That's a great way to turn your one-time customer or first-time customer into multiple buyers because they start bringing in clients to your brand. So that's number approach number one. But, but a second approach is can be even more effective. We're using here something called confirmation bias. So we are confirming that your customer has made the right decision placing an order at your store, buying from you, buying your products. Here, you rem remind them about the quality of the products, the brand story, unique value propositions, your mission statements, maybe you're supporting some nonprofits. You can talk about it. It's like a walk on flow, but for your new customers. Cardo logs, the trifolds and postcards work well here as well because they have something tangible other than your products that they can look around and, and get information about the brand. I believe 2024 and beyond, the story element into brands, or let's call them organic brands, brands that are looking to build be built over the next 10, 20, 30 years, are definitely going, is definitely going to be very important. So you can create that story and talk about it in your email and SMS marketing, in your email and SMS marketing endeavors. So the thank you flow can be structured as follows. First email, you can you can basically thank them for their purchase and talk about the quality of the product they have just purchased. Confirm that thousands or hundreds of others have seen X, Y, Z benefits from using that particular product. You've made the right decision. Then the follow-up emails can talk about the other products, your hero products. Maybe you have only four or five products in store and talk about these four or five products in separate emails. Uh, remember that you want to use as many opportunities as possible to remind your customers about the products that you're offering. It's so easy to forget and not remember that my favorite brand carries that product as well, so why am I buying it from someone else? The moment your customer has placed an order, so the moment your customer is going to see an ad from someone else, from your competitor, showing a product they didn't know or maybe they forgot that you also are carrying, they will place an order with them. Because that moment, they're like, they because in that moment, they're thinking about the product, they like what they see, they see your results, and that's just an impulse buy, like I need a moisturizer, so I'm gonna get a moisturizer. For example, if, you, if you're selling socks, as we had an example before, if you're selling mostly winter socks, but you still have high quality gym socks, the moment I see gym socks from someone else, I'll place an order because that moment I'm thinking about buying gym so socks, so gym socks, so I'll go with that particular brand and I'll not buy from you. But that would be a great addition to the lifetime value, another time, another opportunity to experience your brand, unboxing and all that experience, right? Same goes for skincare or beauty brands. If I bought a serum from you and I don't even know that you have cleansers or scrubs, the moment I see an ad on Instagram or Facebook with someone else's scrub or, or cleansers I'll, or tonics, I'll go with them because that particular moment I was looking for that product. That product obviously showed up in my feed at the right time. That's what ads are trying to do anyway. So it just makes sense to keep to remind to just make sense to remind your customers about the products, especially hero products. Now you you might have thousands of SKUs in your store. That is a different story. At this point, you have to start 
even more talk about talking about the cata categories of your products maybe you have seasonal products so talk about the particular season more obviously but also remember remind them that you have multiple categories i've seen so many stores that i had no idea that they also have the product and i love their products but i just didn't know that they also have these products and trust me i'm a marketer I'm spending a lot of time on online stores trying to find out what everyone else is doing, what's working, what's not working, or doing audits, analyzing them. And I rarely spend time literally going through all categories or all products that any store would have. I just look at the hero products, maybe I will follow their funnels or check out their funnels, but that's it. So your average customer will definitely not go through all product pages or majority of your visitors will not do that. So you wanna make sure that if you have their email or you have their text, as you have their consent to text them, make sure to use every opportunity possible to introduce them to your products. And that's it. I hope that you were able to get some inspirations or some ideas for your email and SMS marketing system. And it's going to help you generate even more SMS and it's going to help you generate even more sales this year without spending extra money on ads or unlocking a lot more profits so you can spend more money on acquiring new customers. That is what I wish you this year and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.